What's up guys, in this video we do a live hangout and I show you guys the behind the scenes of how I make these cannibal baits. So stay tuned. Oops. <laughs> All right, all right, guys, we're live, stoked. So, some ground rules. You guys are welcome to chat amongst yourselves. I can monitor, I can see the chat, monitor the chat. Some of the time, I won't be paying attention to the chat, so just be careful what you say. Uh, if you guys say anything weird, I'll ban you or I'll block you, whatever it takes. Just keep it civil. Um, otherwise, I'll be hanging out here, painting some baits. So, uh, I need to make about four spotted bait, ba four spotted baits, and. Uh, no, one, two, three, four, four spotted bay bass baits and one calico bait. So if you guys are interested in, in these uh, cannibal baits, you, want to, you guys want to check them out, go to, there's a, there should be a little card here that says, that takes, that'll take you to the cannibal baits website. And also, you can, there's a link in the description to this video or to this live stream. And uh, so go check them out if you're interested. If you guys end up purchasing one while doing a live stream, you'll hear a cha-ching sound <laughs> coming from my phone, which would be super cool. So... If you've been holding out to buy one of these baits and you already saw, you've already, if you've already seen them and you've been holding out, it might be the time to buy these baits. That'd be kind of cool, make me work some more. But for now, let's get started. We're going to switch over to an overhead view of my like little paint booth so you guys can see what I'm doing while, while I'm doing it. So any questions, put them in the chat and uh, let's get going, guys. Here we go, switching views. All right, so hopefully you can still hear me. Um, let's, uh, let's get started. As you can see, I, already, I primed all of these and I already kind of started with the base coat for these two. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish doing the base coat for a couple other spotties here. So for these other two. So, I'm gonna, so it's going to be kind of boring for a second because I'm going to mix the paints for that guy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix the paint for such as view. What I'm going to do for these two is I'm going to mix the paint for the base coat. So let me see, I have my little secret formula over here that I figured out after some experimentation. Uh, this guy, this guy, okay, cool. So if you guys have any questions, pop them in the chat. Uh, okay, cool. So I need to mix this guy up. It's a little daunting to have to entertain and paint, but We'll figure it out. Here we go. I have my all my formulas worked out by drops, so that's how I, that's how I roll. Okay, I'm trying to count and not lose track. That's that's that, and then I need some more, some more of these. Okay, here we go. All right, cool. That should be enough for the for the base for the undercolor of these two baits. So let me mix these up. Do I mix this? There it is. Mixing up the paint. Here, I'll switch the view. This is, this is going to be the peep your DMs. Oh, cool. Uh, so this is this is a base coat for the this is a, the undercolor for the spotted bay bass. It's like a cream. It's like a cream color. Once that's, once that's pretty mixed, there you go. It's pretty mixed up. I load it up to the load it up on the airbrush, and we'll paint these guys up. Oh yeah, it's gonna get a little loud when I turn on the fan that that sucks the air out of the booth. So just kind of bear with me, guys. I'll turn it off. I'll turn it off when I'm talking, but when I'm painting, I'm just gonna turn it on so I don't suck all these fumes. Even though here we go. Sorry, sorry, sorry for the sound.
Alright, I'm just gonna explain to you guys what I'm doing so you, when you guys hear that sound, you guys know what it is. So basically, basically after every coat, I heat, heat set it. I heat set it and it basically makes that paint coat uh, dry so I can put another coat on it. So let's go back to the booth view. There we go. Oops, let me turn on the fan. Heat set this guy. All right, I guess that guy's good for now. Let's do the next one. Just miss a tail. All right. Next guy. Heats up this guy. All right, looks good. I guess we'll go over to control camera one. All right. Bam. All right, guys. That's uh, that's that's the base coat for these guys. So now I need to change the color on my airbrush. So I need to clean it out real quick. You guys can see that, I guess. Here we go. It's kind of a pain in the butt. It's kind of a pain, but if you plan it out right, you don't need to do so much with it. Behind the scenes, guys. Fun times. Some airbrush cleaner, shake it all around. Rinse it out a little bit more. The 
That's the sound of the compressor going off. Okay. All right, I think we're ready for the next color. So let me mix that up and we'll load it up on the airbrush in a sec. All right, there we go. Uh, this guy, this guy. It's cracked. It's cracked. Okay, I got a new one. New mixing cup. New mixing cup. Here we go. All right. I need. Okay, about four times as much. So here we go. All right, so what's up? I see Kevin on there. I see Kevin online. What's up, Kevin? Woo! Makes me up some paints, dude. It's like a secret formula. <laughs> All these different drops. I gotta mix in like the reducer and stuff to make it like thin enough to shoot through the airbrush. But not too much. If it's too much, then, then it won't, then it kind of like just sprays all weird. But good to have you on there, buddy. Okay, so let me yeah, mix this guy up. I'm gonna change the view so you can see what I'm mixing. Here we go. There it is. So this is the color that I used. It makes it kind of like a brown, like a really dark brown for like the spotted bay bass uh, spots and uh, the spotted bay bass spot, the spotted bay bass spots and the uh, bars. And the back. So here we go. Ugh. What are you up to, Kevin? Just hanging out. It's kind of late. I know it's like a it's like the late shift. Ooh, that's cool. What, what what pattern are you gonna color your your uh, you know what I'm gonna put your chat up on the here, well I'll, I'll do it in a sec all right so uh, Kevin mentioned that he's he's he, he put together some glide baits that sounds super awesome 
and he's gonna have to paint them soon so here you go this is, this is cool a cool way for you to check out the process have you painted base before oh nice that's cool all right here we go let's see get the uh spotted baby bass pattern on this thing Let me turn on the, it's gonna get a little loud, Kevin. Sorry about that. Uh, but I'm gonna turn on the fan so I don't suck out the fumes. Oh nice, I heard you Kevin. You said you uh done this stuff in a, I haven't done it in a while. Sardines, Max. That's cool. That's cool. How, how big are the glide baits you're making? Like what size? Ten inches, that's awesome. Ten inches, six six and a half inch glide baits and swim baits. Or seven. Nice. Nice.
right. All right, let's see. Let's, let's catch up on these chats. So, so uh, Kevin, looks on that water. No, it's uh, it's uh, Evolution Airbrush. It's a Evolution Two Stage. Uh, airbrush. Yeah, it's Evolution Two Stage. Um, no, it's uh, uh, Evolution is I think is a model. I can't remember the, the brand. It might be it might be Iwata. I'll have to check. Um, clean this guy out so I can do the dots before it, before the uh, before the paint gets dry in there. So I'll go back to that view. stuff out. Are, are your glide baits jointed, Kevin? Nice. Nice. I saw your reply. So your glad baits are jointed. That's pretty cool. Did you did you uh, carve them out of wood yourself? Was how 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 did you, how did you, how's that go? Two pieces for glad baits and three pieces for oh wow three pieces for swim baits. Ooh, I gotta look. I gotta see those. You said the swim baits are six inches long. Dude, sounds awesome. That sounds cool. ABS plastics. Oh, cool. Nice. Nice. All right. All right. The airbrush is good for the next, next paint. Let's get back on these guys here. Okay. So we need to do the yellow belly on these guys next. So yellow bellies. Some yellow bellies. Actually, I should do. Turn the fan back on. Sorry for the noise, guys. If I had time, I would make them out of wood, hand carved wood glide baits are the best. Yeah. Turn the fan back off. Uh, Kevin, Kevin said he, he makes glide baits. Uh, and the best glide baits he says are made out of wood. I believe them. I would like to eventually, I would like to someday carve a nice glide bait for myself out of wood. That'd be cool. bellies. Number one.
Got another yellow belly coming up. Last one. Put a little bit more on the first one. Alright, there it is. So we get the bellies are in. I rinse out this airbrush again. Oh, I learned online. Uh, Mario asked where did I learn where I learned to make crankbaits, and my answer to Mario is I learned online uh, on on YouTube. Actually, there's a guy. Oh, I forget his name. There's like two or three YouTube guys that make videos on how to paint crankbaits or how to paint baits, and so I watched a, a ton of this guy's channels, and uh, sorry, I watched a ton of this guy's videos. And just adapted the techniques for the spotted bay bass. So that's that's how uh, that's how I learned. What type of clear coat do you use after rust -Oleum clear coat epoxy? I use a two ton epoxy for Kevin's question. Kevin asked what kind of clear coat I use. I use a two ton epoxy. I do want I I want to I want to do the uh, uh, what is it called? There's like this diamond coating you can do, like where you dip it, and it's a lot less time to get it done. YouTube University, that's right. That's right. YouTube University, man. It's so true. It's so true. Um, yeah, there's no reason why you can't learn anything. That, there's no reason why you can't... Uh, how can I say this? There's no reason why you couldn't learn anything you ever wanted to learn. Everything's out there. Okay, so let's... Uh, Now make the dots on these bodies. This is where the real work begins. Do you... Oh, which brand of what? Of, e of epoxy, Kevin? Yeah, Devcon. Devcon epoxy. Yeah, that's what I use, a Devcon Clear Epoxy, 2 ton Epoxy. That's what the guy in the video recommended, so I just went with it. It works, it's uh, pretty solid. I haven't had, any I haven't had any issues with it. Alright, so here we go. Even the technique with the little, of putting the spots with like this thing is like from that guy's videos. The guy's pretty, pretty awesome. Oh, sorry guys, I, I didn't realize it was out of the frame. Let me move this a little bit so I can, you guys can see what I'm doing. There we go. That's better.
Happy little baits. All right, that's one. That's another one. Right. Spots, spots, spots. Alrighty, that's number two. Looking good, looking good. Number three.
three is done. Now we're moving on to number four. Uh, this is time consuming, but it makes it look cool. Alrighty, there's number four. Okay, looks good. Make sure you don't have belly spots. Yeah, looks good. Last one. Take a lot of tickets to do. You do. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. I try to like do my best at at the stuff I like to do. So it's also I also really enjoy learning. So it's it's a cool learning experience too. Okay, that's those are the spotty spots. Spotty spots. Every time you buy a, a cannibal crankbait, a spotty gets his spots. <laughs> All right, guys. So these are the that's, that's the basic colors right now. Let's see up here. Mr. Spot. Haha, <laughs> Mr. Spot. There it is. Okay, so these are the basic. This is the basic spotty spotty pattern. Boom. All right. Normally at this point you'd be done and you put an eyeball in it and you're good to go. But I draw the faces, so I draw the eyes and I draw the the angry mouth like the grimace. So. I really like that my baits look like my logo. So, cannibal crankbaits, cannibal baits, that's a deal. So now I'm gonna show you guys how I draw the little faces on here. So let me heat set this and then we'll, I'll show you guys that, that piece. Have you thought of doing jerk baits or other hard baits? If I'm sure your designs will kill us. That'd be sweet. Um, once I get into other other hard bait types, I'll do like I'll, I'll paint them. Basically, I want to I want to I, I wanted to learn how to fish crankbaits, so I 
didn't want to promote other people's stuff. So I figured I'd just paint my own crankbaits and promote my stuff while I'm learning how to fish with them. So yes, the answer to your question is yes, I will move on to other types of hard baits. And once I do that, I'll paint my own. And uh, if, if they get popular, I'll make more. But if not, no, no worries. But I do want to face, I do want to paint, I do want to fish with my own stuff. So I hope that answers the question. But yeah, like I, uh, the my, the uh, the thought about making a glide bait is super cool. Like I thought about repainting this, something like this. Like this is a S waiver. I think it's a 200 S waiver. Um, that would be cool to paint like in a spotted bay bass pattern or something. But like I'm not sure if uh, if anything would hit it in the bay or in the yeah in the bay. I'm not sure if anything would hit it. So I'm not sure. But anyway, it'd be cool to have a a, a, a huge spotty like this. A huge uh, bait like this, that's the, that would be like a spotty, right? That'd be awesome. So maybe I'll like this is pretty got beat up. I took it on a I took it on a on a boat trip, and just like the hook started rattling against it and it just jacked up all the paint. So I might actually repaint this one, and maybe I'll do a spotted bay bass pattern. That'd be kind of cool. I'll, I'll paint a little face on there too. So yeah, I like I like fishing these kind of glide baits in freshwater. All right, so that was the. Uh, that was a glide bait. Alright, so now I'm gonna figure out now, now now I need to paint the faces. So let me figure out, let me remember how to do the faces. So here we go. I need this, I need black, I need red. Okay, here we go. Switching views. Oh yeah, dude. That'd be sick to make like to make like a for, for my thing is I, I really I really like go back to regular camera. So Kevin asked about uh he said that it'd be cool to make a, a glide bait that mimicked the uh, sardine or smelt pattern for the halibut. That'd be sick. That'd be that'd be super cool. Like, uh, I'd still want to paint the little face on there though, because like, <laughs> I just think it's cool. I think the face is mostly for the for the anglers. I don't think the fish mind it. But uh, yeah. So let's see. Calicos on the islands will kill that pattern <laughs> you have painted on this on the S waiver. Oh yeah. So that 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 S waiver pattern. Came that's like the stock one. It's I think it's called like a uh, yellow trout or something like that. But uh, I'm sure they would. Uh, I next time I go to the islands, I'll, I'll take that thing out there and just see how it does. It'd be kind of fun. I, like last time I took it on offshore, it was dumb. But I took it to like uh, I took it paddy hopping, and uh, I wanted to get like a yellow tail or like a dorado to bite it, but no, they, they didn't bite. I saw a few dorados kind of ch followed it, but they didn't, they didn't go for it. So. That would have been cool. That would have been cool. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, so here we go. Now we're gonna do some faces, okay? So this is a. I have, I have a specific brush for each color. This is my black. This is my. I think this is my red. This is my white. So here we go. Switching the camera. Okay, here we go. Need some new brushes soon.
All right. That's the first mouth. There it is. Bam, bam. All right, next one. Put here so you guys can see them. There you go. Kevin, for freshwater, I do mostly bass fishing. Mostly bass fishing, but man, it's been hard lately. Every time I go out, it's definitely it's definitely harder to catch bass, to catch freshwater bass, than it is to catch spotties for sure. Also, I don't like that it's kind of expensive. To get, to get on the lake, it's like 10 bucks for the day, and you have to be off before it gets dark. So, I like fishing all day. If I'm gonna load my kayak, if I'm gonna load my kayak up in my car and like make the trip out of it, I want to fish for a long time, make it worth my while. So, in the summer, it's fun because it's like super long days. Uh, any trout, I haven't done any trout fishing, that would be kind of cool. I want to try it, I haven't done any trout fishing ever. But also, also want to try like fly fishing too, but that's like down the road, maybe next year or the year after that. I think the next thing I'm going to focus on is going to be San Diego Bay. I think the next thing I'm going to focus on is going to be fishing San Diego Bay. Francisco, what's up? Welcome, dude. I'm painting some baits. Painting some baits. Painting some cannibal baits, dude. Trout on two pound test. <laughs> nice. Nice. Nice.
faces, angry mouths. Okay, number four, here we go. Thanks dude, get bent, Justin in the house. Get bent, <laughs> So, just painting up some of these baits, painting the faces on these guys. That's like the most tedious part, but it's what sets them apart, I think. Definitely, definitely need a new black brush. Need a new brush for the black color. Is So, yeah, you should, man. Francisco, you should come down to Mission Bay, man. At this point, at this point, I'm pretty pretty confident I could put you on fish, man. Just come by. If you if you want to bring a kayak, bring a kayak. If you don't want to bring a kayak, we can go happers on a skiff, dude. Skiff fishing is fun, too. <laughs> nice. Francisco said he was slamming them at the Bahia Resort last in June. That's awesome. And and guys on the chat, if you guys hear me read out your read out your chats out loud, it's because in the live stream they won't be able to see your chats. So I'll read out your chats and I'll respond to your chats. That way it's uh it's uh everybody knows what's up. Yeah, dude, the, the uh that's a good spot. That's a good spot. I want to get some waders and fish it. That'd be kind of fun. Dude, like I know, Kevin's question is a real question: Is when am I fishing Newport? I would love to fish Newport. I heard it's pretty good. I heard it's pretty good. Uh, what what do you recommend? What do you recommend? Like a like on a kayak or or yeah, kayak Newport. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. I also want a shore fish too. Okay, that's the last face. There's the other guy. Bam, so that's four bodies that we're doing tonight. Now we're gonna paint the teeth white. Okay. I'm gonna paint the teeth white. It takes a lot of work, but it's totally worth it. I love these things. Which stickers? The the cannibal baits ones? Francisco? Or let me see, let me bust out these guys too. Or one of these guys. Bam! <laughs> That's so funny. Might as, well throw, might as well throw it in the mix, right? Okay. Um white. Gotta paint the white. Here we go. Nice. Hope that dude that used to rap. Uh, Francisco said I remind him. No. Francisco said I remind him of a dude that used to rap his rods. I hope that dude was super cool because I try to be super cool with you guys. I heard I heard like wrapping rods is like a, a real pain. Like, that's hard work. Oh, cannibal sticker, cool, cool. Yeah, I'll hook you up. And then let's see, Kevin said, 
kayaking, float tubing, or sup down in Newport or Huntington. You got access to a lot of good spots. Oh, that's cool. Oh, oh, really? Dude, I've been calling you Francisco the whole time. Miguel. All right, Miguel. I'll call you Miguel. I'll try to remember that. Francisco's Miguel. Francisco's Miguel. Francisco's Miguel. That's awesome. My name is Miguel. My real name. Nice. Cool. Well, nice to meet you, dude. So, are, uh, Miguel, are you in Newport? You know what? Let me put the chats up, guys. Let me see if I can put the chats up. Uh, let's see. Full screen with full screen with chat. Ooh. So you guys can see the chats, but um, you won't be able to see the painting going on over the chats. Let me see if I can add that real quick, guys. Let me see if I can add uh, the chats on the other view. Let's see, full oh, spray booth. Let's see what do we call, what do we call it? What's it called? What's it called? Uh, live stream corner, social media, chat. Here we go. RC chat. Stream chat. Hopefully it doesn't interrupt the stream if I, if I do this guy's thing see what it does. Here we go. Let's, let's try. It. Let's try. It. See if we can add this to the to the spray booth. Ooh, I think we can do it. Let's see. Yes! Oh, nice! It works. Can you guys see the chats now? Let me move this box. If you guys can see the chats, let me know. There it is. <laughs> yes, I love In and Out, dude. It's so good. There it is. There's a chat. All right, guys. There's a chat. Behave. Don't put anything dumb that's gonna mess up the stream. <laughs> All right. So uh, when I go, when when you guys are watching the spray booth, you'll be able to see the chats. So keep it clean and uh, have fun, guys. I'll be monitoring it too, so I can respond uh, the best as I can. Here we go. Yeah, that's cool. It's like a live video game thing. All right, here we go. Oh, cool. What kind of what kind of work do you do? If, if you don't mind me asking. That'd be cool. Last this uh, this last Sunday, guys, we did a 
You guys remember Glenn from OC Sup Fishing? USPS. Oh, cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, I love USPS, man. They they handle it all the time. They just take care of my take care of my biz. Um, last Sunday, so yesterday, we fished. Glenn from OC Sup Fishing and myself set up a little a little tournament with uh, a. <laughs> <laughs> set up a little tournament with uh, a couple other local YouTubers. Um, we called it Skiff Wars. We we rented out um, four skiffs and uh, went out for a little session in Mission Bay. It was super fun. You guys know what Jig Jig Pat was on there. Uh, Rodney Marquez came about came out too with his friend Ronnie and one of my one of my other friends that I met through this channel, uh, Joe. Psychotic edits. He came out and with his friend, and it was a fun time, dude. It was super fun. So we had a reservation for four skiffs. Um, do you guys prefer small baits or quantity or throwing a big baits quality? All right, Kevin. That is an awesome question. So I prefer throwing big stuff for big fish. Um. Cause I feel like I feel like uh, when you throw smaller stuff, you get a ton of bites with little fish. But I kind of want the thrill of catching a big fish, you know. So that's kind of that's kind of what my my fishing style is. But I also don't like to get skunked. So if I'm not gonna, if I haven't caught a, if I caught, if I haven't caught anything big, then I'll just throw little stuff to like get bit. Cause I want to get bit. I don't want to skunk out. So that's my philosophy on that. How about you guys? Yeah, dude, if you throw five or seven inch uh, baits, it's so awesome. Throw them out in the kelp, get some big calicos. So I'm not sure, like, about. I went fishing the last. I went fishing this last weekend, right? And so. Mission Bay, and it seems like it's well, it's way slower than normal. And uh, I'm just wondering what what the fishing is like in the winter or in the fall. But I hear that's when the big fish come out. So I'll have to start grinding it out. Get out there and get some get some big fish. Throw the big baits. What size line test best for shore fishing? Okay, uh, I got it. Okay, back. All right. Thanks for hanging out, dude. Awesome. All right, uh, Daniel asks, what size line test is best for shore fishing? Dude, that's a good question. Um, I think it depends on where you're going to shore fish from. Like, if you're going to shore, shore fish from docks and stuff, like on docks or like around rocks where there's a lot of structure, then I'd go a little bit heavier. But if you're gonna fish where it's just like eelgrass and stuff, and it's not that, not that much hard structure, then you could go a little bit lighter. Um, yeah, eight pound, eight pound. I, I've never actually fished with eight pound. I'm, I'm like, I'm still like, the lightest line I have is like a, a ten pound, ten pound braid. Ten pound braid is supposed to look like four pound tests. That's what I fish with. Just straight up, straight braid to the lure. And then when I fish the crankbaits, I kind of go over the top of the crankbaits. I fish like a 30 pound braid to like a 20 or <laughs> to like a 20 or 25 pound fluorocarbon leader. Because I don't want to lose a bait. Also, like I fish it with the, the with the uh, with the drag tightened all the way down, so so like once I get hit, I just like kind of yank on the fish, so it doesn't take me to a rock. And I kind of like that. I like that about I like that. I like fishing with heavy stuff with these crankbaits, just because uh, I can really yank on the fish. I can yank on the fish, and it's less likely that I'll lose my lure. There's been times when I get snagged. 
and I just keep working it and t try to figure out how to get it out of there. And I go for like maybe 10, 15 minutes and I eventually get it unstuck. The one thing that's kind of weird about fishing with these crankbaits is like when you get a bite, you're not supposed to set the hook. You're supposed to just keep cranking so like just reel the fish in. So when I switch from like swim, swim jigs and stuff to like th these crankbaits like during the session, I end up like setting the hook all the time. And just like yank the fish out of the water, it's pretty funny. Like last time on on Friday night or Saturday, Friday night or Saturday night, I haven't put out the video yet. But I cranked on the, I was cranking on next to shore on my kayak, next to some rocks, and uh, I got bit twice. And uh, <laughs> both times I kind of, I went to set the hook instead of just instead of just keeping my rod low and keep cranking. I set the hook really hard. And the fish were small, so I kind of ripped them out of the water. It kind of just launched them. So funny. So I didn't get to land any of those two. Okay, Kevin uses 40 pound braid, 12 pound floral carbon. Okay, that makes sense. I, maybe I should maybe I should downsize my floral carbon to make it uh, get more bites. Maybe Shimano versus Daiwa versus 13 fishing. Ooh, good question, Kevin. Good question. I've never fished a a Daiwa reel. That's a Daiwa. Well, I have a yeah. I do have a Daiwa Saltist for like this for like the yellowtail. But I don't have like a smaller stuff. I don't have any of the Daiwa smaller stuff. I just have the Shimano and the 13 Fishing. I like the 13 Fishing Concept TX. It's really nice. Um, but I also really like the Shimano stuff. Justin, uh, get bent. What, what, um, what Shimano reel is your favorite? Yeah, for sure. Shimano is quality. That's for sure. They're JDM reels. Okay, old E series. Corrado set. Yeah, it's Corrado. Kind of e That's cool. Nice. Nice. Maybe I should get one of those reels, man. I think I will.
So, are you guys, uh, let's see, they are, okay, they, so, uh, Justin from Get Bent Sport Fishing says his favorite reel, his favorite Shimano reel is the old E-Series, Corrado 200E7, and the Sitica 200E. Sound awesome. Um, the JDM version of the reels are better than the US version of the reels, but they're more expensive. That makes sense, yep. Uh. Oh, nice. So eBay is the way to eBay would be the way to get them. That's cool. Um, guys, do you guys? Do any of you guys have any of you guys spent time focusing on like on a uh, halibut? I want to catch a halibut. I want to catch a nice halibut. What's your? Give me some halibut pointers if you have any. Okay, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Let's go. If you, if you buy those older reels, uh, do they still make components for them so you can like, like uh, repair them and stuff? <laughs> Kevin Kevin gave me some advice for, for catching halibut. He said drop shot fluke or lucky craft from surf. Yeah, I, I kind of want to try that lucky craft. Uh, I think that was well, the surf the surf pointers. That sounds fun. Um, I'm not sure I have the right reel and rod for that setup, but I I did pick some up on. Uh, I did pick I did pick up some of those surf pointers like the 115 and like the 110. So I need to try those out. Try those out, catch, catch a halibut on a hard bait, kind of super cool. These cannibal crankbaits have super, have super white teeth. They have more white. Their teeth are more white than mine. <laughs> Lucky craft flash minnow. That's it. Saltwater are absolutely killer, but are super expensive. Uh. Okay. Uh, Daniel says I'm new to fishing and I have and I've gone out maybe like four times here in Long Beach, uh, but I never have any luck. I usually fish swim baits or drop shot any pointers. Maybe the size of the hook is too big. Daniel, uh, I would just I would fish small baits. Um, Maybe like micro, get like some micro lures from from uh, what's it called from Walmart and uh, some slugs or like small baits, like three inch baits, and either put them on a little. You don't need to go too expensive. You could use you could use one of these guys. Let me see if I can find them real quick. Ooh, where is it? Use one of these little sled heads. This has a sinko on it, but this is kind of this is kind of big though. <laughs> but this, these work, and uh, uh, you could like uh, set it up weedless, right? Or you can even just use the little uh, quarter ounce little ball jigs.
Yeah, I don't have any. I don't have any I can show you right now. But yeah, those are those look pretty good. Cool. Yeah, but so for for Daniel, I would just say, just fish small stuff, fish small baits like a quarter like a quarter ounce ball ball jig, and. Uh, with like some with like, with like some slugs or like the uh, the little the little uh, gulp um, what are they called little gulp uh, uh, what are they called they look like Mr. Uh, what are they called they have a little, they have a little curly, oh grubs they have a little curly tail. So those those are those are do well. Okay, so now I need to do the red. Yeah, a grub, there you go. Alright, Kevin's got a good question. Let me see. I don't know what it says well about you guys. Hey Andres, I'm making my own lures now. Yep, it's called Cannibal Baits. Uh, you can check us out on uh, cannibalbaits.com. Um, they're just crankbaits, medium divers, five to seven feet, depending if you fish them in salt water or fresh water. Um, let's see, what do we have? You have guys. Oh, Kevin is asking about halibut patterns, dude. I wish I, I wish I knew some halibut patterns. Um, but I'll share with I'll share with you guys what I know from from from, from spear fishing. So they use they're they're really shallow most of the time when they're feeding, and usually I find them on incoming tide. Incoming tide, they'll they'll be closer to shore, and like uh, I'm talking shallow guys, like maybe like four feet, five feet of water. They're just hanging out, ready to ambush stuff, and. Uh, so that's my insight from like being from being a diver and seeing those halibut on on the floor and stuff. I haven't I haven't I haven't caught a legal halibut hook and line yet, but I shot a bunch of legals bef uh, when I'm when I was doing spear fishing. While well, spear fishing, I guess. So, if if you guys want to get some more halibut, I would say incoming tide. In the shallows. What I used to do when I was when I was diving is, is I would basically snorkel along the eelgrass where the eelgrass meets the sand. So be, so if you're looking at it if you're looking at it from shore, I would do um I would I would uh snorkel <laughs> so it's the shore then it'd be open open sand like just a little sand flat and then you eventually hit the eelgrass and I would basically snorkel over the eelgrass and I would look over to this over to the towards the sand towards the beach and then usually you would find like a halibut there like wherever there'd be like a weird a weird pattern in the in the eelgrass like a missing chunk or like a little a part of the eelgrass that sticks out there'd be like a nice halibut hanging out buried either buried or not buried Right, at, right off the eelgrass, or sometimes in the eelgrass, just waiting to ambush something. So, any halibut patterns would be, I guess, incoming tide, in the spaces in the eelgrass where, like, where like the eelgrass meets sand. So, hope that helps somebody. Hope that helps, guys. They love the smelting harvest, nice. I put them all nice. Yep, incoming eelgrass next to flats. Yep, that's it. I see some videos on YouTube of these guys that catch them on the, in the surf. That's super fun. That's kind of what I want to do. That'd be a cool video to make. 
to catch them from the surf. It'll be fun. Maybe, maybe I'll get some waiters for Christmas. Dun, 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 dun. That's cool, guys. So, just real quick, check in. Where, where are you guys from? Like, I know some of you guys are from Newport, Orange County. Some guys are San Diego. Just so I have a better idea where you guys are. Where you guys are all at? Where, where are you from, Andres and? Uh, Where are you going? Where are you going? Surf, surf fishing, Andres. I don't. I don't mean the spot. I mean like what location are you? In, are you in San Diego or are you in Newport? <laughs> That's true. Who needs Who needs waiters when you got board charts? That's hilarious. That's hilarious. It's true though. That's so true. Castroville? Oh, that's up north? That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, dude. For real. The waiters are super expensive. Hey Justin, do you um do you do a lot of shore fishing? Yeah, these these crankbaits are looking evil now. Ha ha ha. Oh, nice. Okay, that's cool. Uh, surf fishing, like, uh, Justin's question is, uh, uh, I, I mean, uh, surf fishing, like, from, 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 from the surf, I guess, from, like, the beach. I'm just curious, because I want to I wanna go and I want to try this, like, uh, I want to try that, uh, that surf minnow, that flash minnow, I mean. There's a there's a four mean spotties there. Now I'm gonna clean up the black lines and give it a pupil. Oh, nice. All right, Kevin, thanks for stopping by, dude. See ya. Last time we went, what's up? Last time was, was, okay, cool. Oh, nice. Sand crabs. I haven't fished with live bait, guys. Nice. So, when you do dock hopping, do you get in trouble for going into like the docks and stuff? Going into the going into the private areas, I guess you can say. Do people do people give you do people give you grief?
aqui. Cool. Andres, how long, how long have you been fishing, dude? A couple couple days or what? Around docks, you catch some nice little spotties, dude. It's fun. There's all that structure for them to hide, so they just kind of hang out. If you use like a a nice little quarter 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 ounce drop, quarter ounce or three eighths ounce um, swim bait or something, little jig head. You'll get bit, dude, on docks. Wait, you, you actually, you know what, Andres? You're so far north. Do you guys even have? Do you guys have spotted bay bass up there? Final thing is we're going to put the teeth on these guys. Clean up the lines and put the teeth on. Almost done.
right. Sorry guys, when I'm, when I'm drawing the teeth, I tend to focus, so I get a little quiet. So feel free to talk amongst yourselves. Let's see. Hey, thanks, thanks Andreas. Thanks, thanks for jumping on here, dude. Did I ever make lures before the spotties? Did that be fun? Okay, uh, Giovanni asks if I ever made lures before the spotties. Uh, I made like a, I made a, what's it called? A, a calico one, but they're way harder to paint. Giovanni, where are you from, dude? That is, those are the spotties. Ooh, I'll make sure I got these right. Control on. All right, guys, these are pretty much done. Woo! <laughs> um, Okay. Ooh, nice. nice. Cool. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bit of pearl on the sides and the back, make it look extra shiny, and uh, that should be it for these guys. So let's do that. Oh, cool! Giovanni's SD native. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Giovanni asked if I'd ever pour my own plastics. That seems like a lot of work. Um, probably not. There's so many plastics companies out there. Uh, that market seems super saturated, so probably not. Um, the, but but painting hard baits is fun. I enjoy it. So I probably just stick with hard baits. Maybe I'll do some other other styles other styles of hard baits later on when uh, when. Um, I start to fish those types of baits. Okay, guys. Okay, so All right, I'm put some some pearl on these guys and call it a day. Here 
go. That's just a compressor. Hmm. Oh man, I forgot to shake the I forgot to shake the the pearl. I don't think I actually put any pearl on there. Let's see. There we go. There we go, there's a pearl. talking so I, I appreciate you watching all my videos Giovanni that's cool dude you're here in San Diego we should hit up we should go fishing man I'm down to do shore fishing or kayak fishing you know or if you want to just go skip fishing too I'm down to do that Super shiny. Oops. Okay, shiny spotties. That pearl will pop once we uh, finish these. I'm gonna turn the fan for a little bit, guys. Uh, think a little loud for a second. Okay. Oh. All right. Okay. Clean out this airbrush, and we will. Move on to putting on the epoxy. All right, guys, so. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much how we make these baits. If you guys want to grab some, go to cannibalbaits.com and uh, make an order. Super easy. Um, I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys on the screen. Here we go. Control three. Boom. There's a website. Go cannibalbaits.com and it'll take you to this page, and you can click on the um, get some stickers, get some shirts. Get a 
six uh, six foot diver or or fifteen to twenty foot diver. Um, the ones we're working on today are the six foot divers. These guys. Um, I shipped these with uh, hyperwire split rings, so like the upgraded rings. Let me see if I can find them right here. What is it? So these guys, the oval split rings. These are the pro. These are actually rated for 88, 88 pounds, which you'll probably won't need, but it's just overkill. And uh, let's see, size four hyperwire split rings. And uh, let's see, the owner Stinger Troubles ST56BC's 3 3X size four hooks. Wait, size four hooks. Yeah. Wide gap, short shank, nice hooks. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching this broadcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was cool talking to you guys and hanging out. Um, leave a comment, like the video, and uh, subscribe to the channel for more fishing videos and uh, more lure making videos, maybe. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, so we are uh, go follow Cannibal Baits on Instagram and also check out Grumpy Spotty anyway <laughs> grumpyspotty.com it's a different it's a different section of my website where I sell Grumpy Spotty shirts and uh, stickers and patches so all this stuff I'm doing guys is, is really for me to find a way to make a little money off my YouTube channel um, I'm fishing baits anyway so might as well might as well make them my baits and uh, promote my stuff. Um, I wanted to learn how to fish crankbaits, um, and so I decided to start painting them myself so that I won't have any headaches of dealing with any vendors. And these are my baits, cannibal baits. I fish them, I caught fish on them, I know they work, so check them out. And then I also wanted to have cool spotted bay bass uh, <laughs> apparel, I guess you could say, like shirts and that kind of stuff and stickers and, and patches so I looked around I couldn't find anything that I liked so I decided to put up Grumpy Spotty and that's my brand too and then you guys also want to check out uh, Angry Butt it's a it's a it's basically the same style same style drawing but for a halibut so check that out uh, you get all that stuff on my website uh, if you go to cannibalbaits.com or grumpyspotty.com or angrybutt.com or shop.romancaster.com they'll all take you to my to my to my uh, to my store so thanks for watching uh, have a great night thanks for hanging in there and I will talk to you guys next time all right guys peace now let me figure out how to kill this broadcast let's see all right there you go kill the broadcast all right guys good night